Welcome back to my channel. My name is Tiffany. I recently started making these series called Got PCOS, What's Next? And I hope you guys who have been diagnosed or who have been trying to look for more information has been finding these videos helpful because I know when I first got diagnosed with PCOS, I was extremely overwhelmed and having just a collection of videos on different topics would have been extremely helpful to me. So I hope these videos are very helpful to you all that are watching. So today's topic, we are going to be talking about hair. If you have or haven't been diagnosed with polycystic ovarian syndrome yet, and you've noticed your hair has been falling out in chunks, then keep watching this video because I might have some tips that will help you tackle this hair loss problem. First things first, we need to find the root cause of this problem and why you are losing so much hair. So in order to do that, you have to do a full hormone blood panel test and you should also ask for a vitamin and mineral deficiency blood test as well because that will be extremely helpful. Hair loss is a symptom of polycystic ovarian syndrome and that can happen due to your unbalanced hormones. Doing the full hormone blood test will be extremely helpful because finding out what hormones are out of balance can help you tackle that area that you need to work on. Hair loss is a symptom of polycystic ovarian syndrome and this can happen because your hormones are unbalanced. Doing the vitamin and mineral deficiency blood test can be extremely helpful because sometimes if you have some type of deficiency in either zinc, iron, or vitamin D, for example, that can also cause your hair to fall out as well. But you should always do the blood test first and consult in your doctor before you start taking any type of supplement because you never know what kind of damage that can do for your body. So let's take iron, for example. If you are not iron deficient and you think you are iron deficient and so you start taking iron supplements, this can actually cause a lot of harm on your body because having an excess amount of free iron in your body can actually lead to iron toxicity and that is a problem that you do not want to deal with because that can actually lead to death. So always talk to your doctor first before you decide to take any supplement because they will be able to let you know whether or not that is a good idea or not. Having excess androgens can also result in hair loss, which is one of the main symptoms of PCOS. And this is actually known as androgenic alopecia. And this is the thinning of the hair on the top of your head. Women who have PCOS also have increased levels of DHT, which can also increase testosterone. So if you talk to your doctor, you can actually ask for DHT blockers, which will lower the testosterone in your body, which will also reduce the amount of hair that you're losing. DHT is also responsible for male balding as well. There could be other reasons as to why your hair is falling out as well, and this could be due to stress, poor nutrition, and another one that many people don't think to check is your thyroid not functioning properly. So if your hormone levels have came back all normal and you're still confused as to why your hair is falling out, check your nutrition, check your stress levels, and then also get your doctor to check your thyroid function to make sure that is all working properly. Now that we've gone through some causes of why your hair can be falling out due to PCOS, we can start talking about some solutions on what has actually worked for me and what has helped for other people based off of some research that I have done. One thing I have been doing very, very often recently is hair masks. I have actually been doing this hair mask twice a week and I have noticed that it has been helping out my hair so much just from stopping my hair from falling out. So what I do is I take coconut oil and black Jamaican castor oil and I put that in my hair. And then when I have that in the roots of my hair, I actually flip my head completely upside down and I rub my scalp and just massage it in circular motion so I can try to get blood flow into that area so it will increase hair growth. Our hair follicles are not actually dead. So because they aren't dead, we have hope and a chance of actually growing our hair back. So if your hair is falling out, do not stress out over it because we will figure out a way to get your hair to come back. Like this is not a permanent thing. Unlike male pattern baldness where when they actually lose their hair, I don't think they can actually grow back their hair unless they get hair implants, but I could be wrong. Y'all can fact check me on that. After I have the hair mask in my hair, I pretty much leave it on for the entire day when I am off of work. So since today is actually my day off, 
I will be doing the hair mask and I'll show y'all how I put it in my hair and what I do. I'll leave it on for probably six hours if I can when I'm just not going out anywhere. And then I put a little shower cap on my head and I just keep that on all day. And then once I shower, I just wash my hair with shampoo and conditioner like normal. And I try to get out the oil as much as I can because if you even leave in a little bit of oil or not, washing your hair thoroughly enough, then your hair will be extremely greasy the next couple days. But I've actually just left my hair like that. And it doesn't look that great, but just braid it and no one will notice that your hair is greasy. It's fine. I am going to go ahead and show y'all a quick demo. So put on a t-shirt that y'all don't care about getting dirty and then grab your supplies. I am using this black Jamaican castor oil. Oh, there is my hair stuck all over it. Please ignore that. Got this from Amazon. And then I am also using this organic coconut oil from Kirkland. This is from Costco. It is so big, so great. I can't remember how much it was. To start, go ahead and brush your hair to get all the tangles out. Once you have your hair brushed out, I like to start off with coconut oil, place it on my hand like this, and I literally just start to coat my entire head with it. Normally I would do this in the bathroom, but the little fan thing in the bathroom is always on and I don't like how loud it is in videos. So I am just doing this at my desk and we'll try not to make a huge mess. So I'll get a nice coat on the top of my hair and then I'll pull all my hair to a side and then also start to coat the bottoms of my hair with the coconut oil. I feel like I'm making a mess. Yeah, I would definitely suggest doing this in the bathroom over your sink. And then make sure you coat the tips. I will put my hair to the back and then start to separate my hair and then pour the Jamaican castor oil onto the roots. So just pour like a little bit and then smooth that in and then keep separating my hair pour that in. I have a mirror right here. That's what I'm looking at. And then I'll do the other side. Oh, too much, too much. Oops. And then I also make sure to get the crown of my head back here. Okay. Now, all that is soaked in. I am going to go ahead and flip my head upside down and do the root massage. Do this for at least three to five minutes, I would say, because you want to stimulate your scalp and get blood to flow through this area so your hair can grow back. When you're done rubbing it into your scalp, just throw it into a hide bun. And then I just use a hair tie and I just put it right on top and just leave it like this. You cannot forget your shower cap and you are good to go. So just let this soak for as long as you'd like. I'm probably going to keep this on until nighttime. It is four o'clock right now. So I probably won't wash my hair until like nine o'clock tonight. Another type of hair mask you can try is rice water. Rice water is also thought to contain amino acids, vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. So it's really great for your hair. So there is actually two ways that you can make rice water. One is called the soaking method and the other is called the boiling method. So when you are using the soaking method to create your rice water rinse, you start off with a cup of rice or just any, uh, any amount of rice. I normally just use like, I think three fourths of a cup. And then I put it in a bowl. I make sure to wash the rice first. You don't want to use dirty rice on your hair. And for all of you who cook rice that don't wash your rice, you need to wash your rice. That reminds me of the BBC video of that one lady who didn't wash her rice. You gotta wash your rice because you don't want dirty rice. 
But anyway, wash your rice first, and then you pour about two cups of water into the rice that you just washed and rinsed. And then you just let that sit for at least 30 minutes. After that, you can just strain that and use that rice water to just pour on your hair and leave it in for at least 20 minutes before you rinse it out with just cold water. You don't have to wash your hair with shampoo after that. The second way of making the rice water is actually boiling it. So get your cup of rice or three fourths cup of rice, however much you want to use, make sure you wash the rice and then you put it on the stove top and you boil it with water. But make sure you're using more water than when you would cook the rice on the stove top, if that makes sense. So just boil the rice and then you can strain that and let that cool down and you can just pour it in your hair and let that sit for at least 20 minutes before you rinse it out. There is also two types of rice water. There is plain rice water and fermented rice water. So making plain rice water is just how you would do it like with the soaking method or the boiling method and then you can just use it immediately right after. The fermented rice water is thought to be better because it has more antioxidants, but y'all, this stuff stinks. So I'm giving y'all a warning now if you're planning on using fermented rice water. It does have a kind of sour smell to it that I personally cannot handle, but it does have more antioxidants in it, so it is better for your hair. And to get the fermented rice water, you use the same method as the soaking method, but instead of draining the rice water and using it immediately after soaking it for like 20, 30 minutes, you actually let it sit for two days in room temperature and then you put it in your hair. But yes, it's not have a pleasant smell, but it works. I can also make a video comparing the black Jamaican castor oil and coconut oil mask with the rice water mask and see what my hair looks better. So I can do that maybe next week or something and let y'all see the differences. If there is a difference, because I personally haven't really tried rice water except for on my face, but I have heard great things about putting rice water in your hair and stopping the fallout. So going back to another way on how to stop your hair loss is to make sure you're eating a balanced diet. Hair loss can also happen due to nutrient deprivation. So you need to make sure that you're eating a balanced diet and you're getting all the nutrients in your body so your hair can actually stop falling out, which is why doing the vitamin and mineral deficiency blood work is also a good idea as well. I've actually read a bit about the keto diet causing hair loss and from personal experience, I'm pretty sure the keto diet is what caused me to lose a lot of my hair as well when I was on the keto diet. I'm no longer on the keto diet, but I do still eat low carb alternatives. So like low carb wraps instead of regular tortilla wraps. And I'm also using monk fruit sweetener and swerve instead of real sugar. But I am starting to eat all my fruits and veggies again, which was actually really sad and really hard for me to give up. And I'm also eating complex carbs such as sweet potatoes and brown rice. But I think because I was cutting out a huge chunk of that food group, it caused me to actually lack a bunch of nutrients in my body, which resulted in my hair falling out really badly. Like you guys, it was actually terrifying how much my hair was falling out. I don't have any photos anymore, but like, just huge, huge chunks of hair would fall out whenever I'd brush my hair or whenever I showered. Even if I already tried to pull out all the hair and like brush out all the fallout before I would go and shower, I would still have just like chunks of hair falling out after washing my hair. I've also read that doing the keto diet isn't great for long term as well, since you are cutting out so many different types of foods that your body actually needs to function. But the keto diet has worked amazingly for a lot of people. So I guess it's just based off of what your body can personally handle, but my body could not handle the keto diet because my hair was falling out immensely. Another way to help with hair loss is that you can actually take some natural supplements to help with that. So I am huge on natural supplements. I hate taking medication unless I absolutely have to. Like I literally would refuse to take it, but I have done some research on some natural supplements that can actually help with hair loss. And one is very shocking to me, and this is new to me, but melatonin. I actually had no idea that melatonin could help with hair loss, but based off of a study, if you use topical melatonin, it actually helped with androgenic alopecia in women and their hair was 
able to grow back and less of it fell out as well. I will also be linking a couple studies down below in the description box for y'all to check out. I love reading scientific journals and this is actually where I get a lot of my research from because this is actual experiments that scientists have conducted. So I love reading the results and the conclusion and it actually has helped me immensely in a lot of my polycystic ovarian research. So definitely check those out. Melatonin surprisingly also decreases androgen production. And as y'all may know, that increased androgen levels will actually cause hair loss. So if you're able to decrease your androgen production, then you are also able to decrease your hair loss. Another supplement that you can take is also collagen and biotin. This is just really great for strengthening your hair and collagen also has a lot of antioxidants in it, which is really, really great for your body. If you go to the doctor and talk to them about hair loss, more than likely your doctor will prescribe you something called spirolactone. This is a medication that a lot of women who have PCOS take and it actually helps with their hair loss. But I have also read that eventually it has stopped working for some women. So, I would always look for natural routes I can take first before I would take a medication, but that is also a personal preference. I'm not hating on medication, but I just personally want to do what's best for my body naturally before I have to go down the route of taking medication. Those are a couple things y'all can try out if you're experiencing hair loss due to polycystic ovarian syndrome. So just a quick recap is the two hair masks, the coconut oil and the black Jamaican castor oil and the rice water hair mask, and then also having a balanced diet and then also taking some natural supplements or you can talk to your doctor about different medications you can take to combat that hair loss. But I hope y'all enjoyed this video and found it extremely helpful. And if you have any comments or questions and definitely comment down below and let me know and yeah I will see y'all in my next video